Hello and welcome to this episode of For Your Consideration. Now, my name is Guy and today I'm looking at a topic that was brought to my attention by Derek uh, Menebrucker. Uh, at least that's certainly how I think it should be pronounced, Menebrucker. Nonetheless, Derek Menebrucker brought this topic to my attention because I had spoken in the past about the different types of adventures that one can go on. And... Uh, he raised the point that there are actually some more adventure possibilities out there other than the usual four, the thwarting, the delivery, the collecting and so on. So I have looked at his suggestions and I think I agree with him. There are some subtle differences with these types of outcomes that push it to a point where we need to talk about it. So we're talking about the sub-adventure types that have an outcome-specific situation, which are negotiate, escape, investigate, and rescue. So they have an outcome-specific requirement. Whereas with, say, thwarting or with delivering or collecting, those are not necessarily outcome-specific. So they can end in any way. They can end disastrously, they can end successfully, and the continuation of the story is almost guaranteed. But these become very, very important in terms of having a specific outcome. So how we treat them is slightly different from how we would treat something else. So these are the four types. Negotiate, escape, investigate, and rescue. Now, investigation I'm actually not going to talk about because investigation is very similar to a murder mystery. So you as the game master, you running the game, you have to figure out how to run this investigation. So go and watch my video on murder mysteries, how to run a good mystery, because that's basically the same idea. So I'm not going to look at that in this video. Now, outcome specific. In the case of a negotiation, there are effectively two outcomes. Maybe there's a third or a fourth one, but generally speaking, either negotiation is successful or it isn't successful. You need to make it possible. Now, this is the challenge. All of these, you need to make it possible. So if it's a rescue, you need to make it possible. You also need to have multiple solutions because if it's black and white, if it's one or the other, if it's a yes or a no, you run the risk of it collapsing altogether. So having multiple outcomes, being flexible about those outcomes is important. You also need to have alternatives. What if you've created a negotiation adventure and the characters don't get there? Can it change? Can it be altered. Now, an, ex an excellent example in this is, generally speaking, when we look at, say, the Star Trek series in general. An ambassador has been assigned to the ship to go and conduct vital negotiations on behalf of some alien race and some other alien race. And the ship, the Enterprise or the Discovery or whatever ship it is, is transporting them from there to there, and then they die or are assassinated, or liquefied, or develop some kind of Bandai syndrome, or whatever the case might be. And now the heroes have to conduct those negotiations themselves. That's an alternative that you need to be aware of. And what if those heroes get themselves arrested before the negotiations can happen? Do the negotiations fail? Do you delay? Do you pause? Do you alternately change those negotiations? Do you again use another Star Trek? trope where they are arrested and they put in prison and the people they're in prison with are actually the people they were supposed to be negotiating with but the negotiation team wanted to see how they handled the criminal system that the new team is now you need to have alternatives because although the outcomes seem very specific rescue my daughter from certain death and she's in a tower how they go about that rescue what happens if they don't rescue her? What's the alternative? What's the solution? You need to have all of that in mind. So when we come to negotiation, negotiation is a very complicated subject and there are many, many different ways of negotiating. And of course, it is a real career for a lot of people on this planet. So there's a lot to it that three little uh, lines and a slide are not going to do justice to. However, in general, you need to identify the stakes. What can be negotiated? What are the parameters for that negotiation? And how far can they go? You need to identify the outcome. You need to plan it way in advance. And generally speaking, I would always plan a negotiation to have an element of discovery and escalation to it. 
So whilst one player is negotiating, because this is, this is now where you have to work with the players, one player is going to be responsible for the negotiation. And that's usually the most vocal player or the most charismatic player at the table who will do the actual negotiation. What are the rest of the players going to be doing while that is happening? That's something that's very, very important to bear in mind. And so usually what I will do is I will wrap up a mystery around that negotiation. So the one character, I split up the party. The one character is responsible for the actual negotiations. The rest of the party are on the sewers underneath, discovering the dynamite that's set to blow up the uh, discussion rooms and thwart the negotiations, uh, etc., etc. So I try and give the other players something to do that links to the negotiation are not vital whether they solve it or they don't solve it. The negotiation is going to happen anyway, but that gives them something to do and that drives the narrative forward. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of people sitting around a table arguing over resources. It needs to advance. But remember, this is your entire plot. This is your entire adventure. So you need to work into identifying how can you make it more interesting for multiple people rather than just for the individual, uh, just for the individual player. You need to drive it further. Now, with rescue type scenarios, rescue type scenarios are almost the inverse of a prison break. And if you watch that prison break video, you certainly will get enough information to run a rescue. So the rescue, obviously, you need the situation. What or whom is being rescued from what or whom and where? That's the usual kind of stuff. What are the defenses? What can you put in place that will allow the characters to succeed regardless of how silly or bumbling they are? And if they don't, what's at stake? What happens if that rescue doesn't happen? Is the person going to get executed? Or let's say that the player's characters are just doing silly things, they're stuffing around, they just they they make bad mistakes, as happens. It's possible. It does happen. They get to the prisoner, they've set off all the traps, and they can't escape. Is the prisoner still executed at dawn? Or does the Grand Vizier, who was going to do the execution, now decide because the players screwed up, but because of narrative, that the execution will happen when all of them will be executed, which will be in a week's time after they've been transported in a flimsy transport wagon across the desert with only three guards, one of whom happens to be suffering from the palsy. In other words, giving the players the chance to then escape and to continue on with the adventure rather than just making it end as in a dismal failure. So that's a rescue. You've got to have an alternative. You've got to have a continuation thereafter, but you also need to work out what those defenses are and how the players are going to overcome them. Whether it's you need to have NPCs who are going to give the players that information. They're going to give the players, well, I know that the guards change at midnight and they usually take about an hour to get cocoa. So there's a big window in that, uh, in that period or I know that their scanners detect metal. So don't wear metal and the scanners can't detect you. All those kinds of pieces of information you can then add in as you work out how this rescue is going to unfold and then what happens if it doesn't. So we then look at escape, or we don't look at escape, as clearly my slides indicate, because escape is a prison break. And as I have said, there is a prison break video out there which details a lot more than I would in just a video like this the more specific areas around how to plan a prison break. A pr an escape is exactly the same idea. Whether it's a prison or the characters are just bound and gagged in a warehouse, the same ideas apply. So when you look at negotiation, when you look at escape, when you look at investigate, when you look at rescue, there is a specific outcome. And if that outcome is not met, what are you going to do about it? Your players don't know what that outcome should be, so they don't know where to angle or where to aim. How are you going to get them there? And the answer is NPC. NPCs, of course. NPCs, uh, adventures that lead up to this, that give them lots of clues. But primarily, it's going to be in your NPCs and how you use those NPCs. So seed them early on. Make sure that their NPCs that they're bumping into, that they can bump into later, so that when the players get into a tricky situation, you have the ability to save them and to get them out of it. There's nothing worse, there's nothing more defeated than a grump bunch of players whose characters on a situation so dark, so desperate and so dire that they have no idea how they're going to get out of it and that they think that the entire party is going to die. Some tables enjoy that when they have a TPK. I generally don't as a 
as a GM because I run long-term campaigns. I don't run sandbox short-term stuff that doesn't have an impact whether the characters live or die. So it does depend, but if you seed your NPCs beforehand, if you make sure that they are there, they can provide the support. And of course, make sure that your villains are going to extend the deadlines that are going to change the outcomes based on what the characters have done. And it's always going to be in such a way that the characters have a moment, a chance of redemption. Make sure that they not necessarily aware of that. It just must feel as if organically this is why there's a stay of execution or a movement of troops, etc., etc. Don't be afraid to let that enter into the game. Specific outcome type adventures like this require us to decide whether our game is going to be a hard and fast if you succeed you succeed if you fail you fail or if you don't succeed we will present you with another opportunity to succeed but we're going to wrap it up in the guise of another adventure i prefer to do it that way because it keeps the game going rather than having to start again from scratch anyway those are my thoughts on the four different types of sub adventures that you can have as brought to us by Derek Menebrucker. Thank you for that uh, suggestion there, Derek. And um, yes, let me know what you thought of the video. Hit that like button if you liked it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more like this, where we unpack subgroups and maybe even take specific ideas further. Leave your comments below. You know what to do so we can all decide and learn from one another. Anyway, until next time, if you haven't heard of worldanvil.com, you really should have by now because it's on a lot of my videos. We've partnered with them. They are uh, promoting our videos. We're promoting their, their wonderful, wonderful campaign world generating, aggregating data resource, which is all free uh, for you to use to keep track of your adventures, to write up your NPCs, to have all of that information at your fingertips on their remarkable website head on over to www.worldanvil.com and sign up today if you haven't already. It's a great resource. Anyway, until next time, I wish you and yours the happiest of weekends. Mm -hmm.